y'all, welcome back. I'm Mom and Dr. Jones, a board certified OBGYN and mom to four. I have attended three of my own births. One of my births produced two children and thousands of other humans' births. For some reason today, I have decided we are going to watch Animals Birth. <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. You are going to learn some very wild facts, particularly about a hyena, a hy just, there's a fact about hyenas in this that I don't think most of you probably know. So stick around and make sure you don't miss that. If you're new and you'd like to subscribe, I would love to have you. This video is absolutely getting demonetized. So subscribe and turn on notifications. That will make me happy. Let's jump into the video. The first birth we're watching is a giraffe, and I don't think it is this giraffe birth, but I wonder if anybody else has the memory of everybody on the internet waiting for that one giraffe to give birth. Everybody was really excited, and the whole time all I could think of like how horrible it would be to be waiting to have a baby, and there's a camera on you, and everybody in the world is watching and waiting for your baby to come. Was its name April? April the giraffe? That sounds right. I don't remember. Someone comment down below and tell me. When Tyra the giraffe delivered her calf, the birth process was very much by the book. After a pregnancy lasting 14 to 15 months, giraffes deliver standing up. 15 months feels like forever to be pregnant. Animal gestations are actually roughly associated with their size. So African elephants have the longest gestation at 645 days, which is almost two years. Can you imagine being pregnant for almost two years? I can't, I don't want to. Thank you, I will pass. We saw first one foot, then the second foot came out, and it was probably about an hour before um, we saw just a little bit of movement, and then a tongue and, a, and the upper lip, and then gradually up came the face, and the front legs have been flexing. Two feet and a face is a human obstetrician's nightmare presentation. And she may rest up for a little bit right now, but it's not going to take too much more. Once she starts pushing this time, when we get to the shoulders, then the kids should come out and push. Push. Does anyone else feel like that's a long fall? I mean, I know nature designed them this way, it's fine, but giraffes are kind of tall and to enter into this world just dropping from that height seems horrifying to me. It says, hey, hurry up, mom. My ears are wiggling. I said, I've done this so many times now. Is it just gonna plop on the ground? Oh, wow. <laughs> From start to finish, the calf's burn. That does not look okay. I know it's okay, but it doesn't look okay. It just fell head first. Tyra immediately began washing her new infant, who picked up her head and took her first look around. Within minutes, the calf began to cut its skin for the first time. In the wild, it is essential that newborn giraffes stand up quickly in order to help them evade predators. It's so cute and so sad. It took the calf a few tries, but after about an hour, she was standing on her own and nursing from mom. It's so cute. And they learned to stand up and walk within an hour. That's so impressive. It took my baby a whole year, my God. All right, the next one on the list is a seahorse. And as I'm sure many of you know, Seahorses are extremely unique because the male seahorses actually give birth. I know this fact because trans men having babies often in their community will refer to themselves as seahorse dads. However, I also know this fact because my nine-year-old is obsessed with animals and she knows every obscure animal fact you could imagine and has taught me this when she was like five. there. <laughs> Up to 2,000 babies? What? My mind is blown. I had no idea they would have 2,000 seahorses at a time. That daycare bill is going to be through the roof. 
fewer than five in a thousand survive to adulthood? This poor dad just worth 2,000 seahorses and only 10 of them will probably make it? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to recover from this video. That is not what I expected it to look like, but there you go, 2,000 miniature seahorses. The next one on our list is a kangaroo. Kangaroos are quite interesting. Basically, they birth a fetus, which then crawls into the pouch and attaches itself and grows into a kangaroo. It's really wild, and I haven't seen these videos. Somebody picked them out for me to watch, but I hope that this is one that shows the process of the fetus kangaroo basically crawling into the pouch so that it can gestate. It's really wild. Here in Australia, this baby red kangaroo called a joey has been out of the pouch for just two days. They're actually kind of dangerous. I think red kangaroos are like extremely able to murder you. And mom is getting ready to give birth again. How does this work? Well, let's find out. Okay, they said the other one had been out for two days and now she's having another one? A pink kangaroo embryo the size the of a video. lima bean pops out. It's blind and deaf, and yet somehow it's got to find its way to the mother's pouch. Its hind legs, which will someday allow the kangaroo to jump nearly 30 feet, are now just useless buds. It's going to have to drag itself upwards six inches, using its forelimbs to climb through the forest of its mother's thick fur. It will take about three minutes. Is it this crazy? It's a fetus. It is a fetus. It is a fetus and it came out to migrate six inches to the pouch. Do you know how far that is for a tiny, teeny tiny, tiny kangaroo fetus? This blows my mind. This is so incredibly strange and amazing and cool to me. Once inside the pouch, it searches out mom's nipples and starts feeding. This embryo will remain latched on to one nipple for 34 weeks. Once it leaves the pouch, it'll continue to suckle from its mother for another four months. This is so wild. Okay, that's almost exactly the same as a human gestation. So can you imagine a human fetus exiting at six weeks? They look relatively similar to that making its way to your nipple and growing on your nipple for the next 30 plus weeks. Like, I, I'm sorry, I can't. Kangaroo mothers win for miraculous birthing and baby growing techniques. This is incredible. Now here's the amazing part. This tiny pink critter was actually conceived many months ago. In an earlier stage, it remained in a kind of suspended animation called a diapause while mother tended to the youngster that's now outside the pouch. The mother kangaroo now produces two separate and distinct kinds of milk. One for the embryo, the other for Joey. How, I need, are there any veterinarians on YouTube or like zoologists or something who can make a full video about kangaroo conception and gestation and birth? Because my mind is just blown. So they stay in a pause of diapods which means they grow a certain amount and then they basically just stop. It's like a sea monkey, you know? A sea monkey will, it can be like frozen in a dry sea monkey egg for hundreds of years or something crazy like that. But this is a mammal. How does that happen? Where do they go? Where do they store it? How does the body decide if it's gonna store it or have the fetus crawl to the pouch? I need to know more. I had seen that video before, but I didn't know these facts. Somebody find me someone to make a video about this. Once she reaches sexual maturity, the female breeds for eight to 12 years. In times of drought, she doesn't breed, but otherwise, she keeps her cycle of diapause, embryos, and joeys going strong. The dominant male, having won the right to woo mom, claims his mate. I feel like that female kangaroo is like, uh, excuse me, what are you doing? <laughs> But the dominant male scoffs at this upstart. <laughs> Hear that? That's the sound of a dominant male kangaroo scoffing. I can't. Oh my gosh. That's the sound of a dominant male kangaroo scoffing. That needs to be a TikTok sound. 
The result of this mating will produce an embryo nope, that will No, I don't want to see the mating. That's not what we're reacting to here. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, the next one is a kiwi bird, which I feel is extremely applicable to my life right now as we have recently moved to New Zealand for work. I have never seen a kiwi in person, but I understand they smell like mushrooms. That is what I've heard. I've also never seen a kiwi birth. I thought they would just hatch out of eggs, so this should be interesting. Imagine giving birth to a 24 pound baby. That's three times the size of an average human newborn. Ouch. I don't want to think about that, thank you. For kiwi birds, giant chicks are the norm. Females lay a single egg up to 20% of their body weight. She hasn't eaten for several days. This x-ray photograph shows the huge size of the egg. There's almost no room in the abdomen for food. What? That egg is like as big as the bird. What is happening? Is that real? No wonder they're borderline extinct. My God, I wouldn't want to lay eggs either, my friends. Her mate makes an even bigger investment. North Island males take sole charge of the clutch and are tied to the nest for a marathon three months. And they have to exist on a very reduced diet. They can only afford brief foraging expeditions from the burrow. It didn't occur to me until I was editing this, but they just said the female bird can't eat because the egg is so huge, it like prevents the bird from eating. And then they have to lay that egg. And then they said, but the partner contributes even more by sitting on the nest for three months. Her mate makes an even bigger investment. All the praise for doing the bare minimum. The next one is a sloth. I don't understand that I'm having a Kristen Bell moment joke, but Kristen Bell follows me on Instagram, so cool story. Stop. It's going to give birth hanging in a tree upside down. You've got to be kidding me. This is incredible. It's so cool. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. Also, it said that it, it eats the umbilical cord. I often hear people say, oh, humans are the only ones that don't eat their placenta. This is why we should eat our placentas. And I just have to say, I don't recommend eating your placenta. There's nothing that would indicate that that would be beneficial to you. There's also potential harm there. However, the reason we are the only animals that don't regularly eat our placentas is because we don't have natural predators who are smelling them out to eat our babies. This is a sacrifice that animal birthers make, which we are not required to make. If you would like to, you do you, Taris, but I don't think there's any medical benefit to it and there are potential harms. Okay, the last one is a hyena. The actual last one is a desert spider and absolutely not going to happen. Karen, who helps me organize content for videos, must not be aware that I have a terrible problem with spiders, but I can't watch that. I will link it below. If you have some kind of masochistic interest in watching a spider have babies, but I can't do it. Hyena, let's do the hyena. Speaking of birth canals, the spotted hyena has an interesting one. Mm. Females have phallic-like genitalia. The scientific term for this is pseudopenis, and they give birth out of this pseudopenis. Hyenas give birth through a pseudopenis. If we weren't demonetized before, we most certainly are now. Which will sometimes rip apart in the process. It's not only painful, it can be lethal. In fact, about 15% of first-time mothers die giving birth. 
Well, that was some interesting facts. It didn't actually show a hyena giving birth, but now I must look that up because uh, why would we not? It's like hanging off of the tail. Is it hanging by the umbilical cord? Oops, baby. That's terrible. Like, oopsie daisy, never knew that was your boo, baby. Hit it five times in the cool Mercedes. Am I the only one who had no idea about this pseudo penis hyena thing? How have I gone this long in reproductive spaces and how do I know so many obscure animal facts and I never knew that hyenas had a pseudo penis that they gave birth through? I don't, e I don't even know what to say. I, I, I don't know if I wanted to learn that. Like maybe I was supposed to go my whole life without knowing that and now it's ruined. But now I know and I can't unsee or unthink that and I don't know what to do with this information. What do I do with this information? I wish I wouldn't have watched that, you know? Okay, y'all, I hope that you learned something today. It was the first in what, if you would like it to be, will be a series of, of watching animals give birth. If you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, we would love to have you. I talk about all things periods, pregnancy, and everything in between. I promise you will leave with things to tell your friends, like hyenas have a pseudo penis. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss an upload, and I will see you next Monday.